Um, but polynomials are like a group of numbers. So for instance, if I were to have 3x plus 5, this is called a polynomial. And the reason it's a polynomial is because notice that there's no equal signs attached to it. Notice that there's nothing that else that I can do. This is just a set of numbers. We cannot change the value of this. We cannot solve for x. We just have to literally keep it together. Does that make sense? I'm going to dig a little bit deeper here. When it says degree one and degree two, what that's referring to is the exponents that you have. So right now, how many x's do I have? One. Do we agree that that is just one? Therefore, that is at degree one. If I were to have three x squared plus five, this is now at degree two because of the number of the exponent. If I were to put three x to the third, what do you think we would call that? The third degree, right? Now this is our T that we're studying today. So we're going to talk about adding and subtracting, which we know those terms very well. Polynomials, so groups of numbers, of degree 1 and degree 2. Notice that none of my exponents are ever going to exceed the exponent of 2. That's what I want you to understand. My exponents are never going to exceed the value of 2 on this. We're all good there? A little bit more for you here. So we have our polynomial, which is just the underlying or the overlying theme. The polynomial. Then we also have a monomial. What does the prefix mon mean? Does anybody know? One. One, right? So if I have a monomial, it's just one term. Okay, that's a monomial. Or we could even put 3x. A binomial is 3x plus 5 because there's two parts to it. You don't need to understand this. I'm just introducing it so you have a better idea. And then our third one is going to be what we call a trinomial, which is 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. It's off screen. Cool. Thank you, sir. We could. We will not in my class, but yeah, you could have this go on forever and ever and ever. Most of the time, Hayden, if you exceed three numbers, you're just going to call it a polynomial because poly means many, and therefore it's going to show that you have uh, multiple operations there. All right, we all good with this so far? All right, now, before you stress out about this, this is actually a really easy topic. One that I think you'll catch on to pretty quick, and one that I think will be pretty simple when we really break it all down. All right, so I found this PowerPoint. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. I did not create it, so any typos or anything in there, no judgment, please. Uh, let me get the, let me get my screen adjusted a little bit. Make sure we're all good. All right, so again, we're just trying to solve these different types. Today, we're only going to talk about adding and subtracting. We'll move on to multiplying and dividing at a later date. The polynomials. So again, same thing we just covered right there. Okay, so this says line up the terms in descending order. If you are missing an exponent term, leave a space. Well, what does it mean if I say something is in descending order? It goes down. Yeah, so what this means is that I'm really going to list my numbers out from the biggest exponent. So, for instance, 3x squared plus 2x plus 5. So as far as the degrees go, our degree of 2 our degree of 1, and our degree of 0. Can we all agree with that? Descending order from greatest exponent to least exponent. We're cool there? All right. So again, nothing. I haven't shown you any math yet. Just introducing the very basics of this idea. And we're going to add the coefficients. The coefficient is the number in front of the variable. The coefficient is the number in front of the variable. We'll add that together. We'll leave the variable and the exponents the same. So I want you to think back to sixth grade. Okay, in sixth grade, you guys learned about combining like terms. In 
the same thing here. We can only combine numbers together if they have the same variables. That's the only way we can do it. All right, so here's our first one. So before I solve this all out, I'm going to show you what it would look like on your paper. So you're going to have 5a squared minus 3 plus 8a squared minus 1. So again, I didn't rewrite the problem any differently. All I did was I just wrote it out there. Can we all agree with that? Now, for simplicity terms, all we're going to do here, I'm going to turn this up a little bit. There we go. We're just going to combine them. Like terms, this is going to become 13 a squared minus 4. Okay, let me reiterate that again. The only reason I can combine these two together is because they both have an a squared. Are we okay with that? I know that when we talked about exponents earlier, we were able to use these same bases and put them together. But because this is a binomial or a polynomial, these numbers have to stay together. We can't remove them. We can't change them. So when I add them together, 5 and 8 gives me 13. My a squared stays the same. Negative 3 minus 1 becomes negative 4. Yeah, Carter? Why does 5a prefer an 8a squared? Then you could not combine them. And we'll see that when we get to our trinomials here in just a second, you'll have some that just cannot be combined. Great question, though. Good? All right. Keep on going, then. I really need to invest in a clicker to change my PowerPoint. All right. So for this one, it's the same idea. If I were to write them out, it would look just like the previous one that I wrote. So I'm not going to solve it yet, but it would look something like this. 4m squared minus m plus 2 plus 3m squared plus 10m plus 7. That's how the problem would look for you. And it would have it in parentheses so that you would be able to identify what your two trinomials were. Again, we'll see them, I promise. I'm just trying to show you what to kind of expect so you'll have them in your notes. Okay, now, we're just going to combine all like terms. So, 4m squared minus 3m <coughs> squared is going to give me what? Bless you. It's going to give me 1m squared or just m squared. We're okay with that. Negative n plus 10m is going to give me a positive 9m. Plus 9. We're all good with those? Questions? Okay. Okay. Move right along here. Alright, subtracting is basically the exact same thing. Change the signs of all the terms in the second polynomial. We'll talk about that here in just a second. We'll go from there. Okay, so what it's saying by change all the signs is it just wants you to make sure that they're all positive so you're not having any issues with your positive and negative. So, let me leave this one up there. I know that I told you we were never going to have a third degree, and we won't. This is just because I found this PowerPoint from somebody else. Are we all okay with that? You still do everything the exact same way. We just won't do it in my class. Notice that there's no m to the third up here like Carter mentioned a second ago. So why do you, that's why I just drop it down here. Because there's nothing there, so nothing changes that value. We're all okay with that. n squared plus n squared. What happens when I have a negative and a positive of the same thing? Cancels they cancel each other out. Yeah, good. 2n minus n becomes 1 positive n and negative 12. So if you were to write this out, the answer would be Everybody okay with that? Steven, you good? I can't see. Okay, we'll have to work on that then, man. I'll work on moving that tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to leave it for now, though, okay? What I want you to see, though, is notice that since these n squareds canceled out, I didn't put anything in my polynomial down here. 
I just left it totally blank. If the number disappears, I don't need to add it anywhere. It's just gone. Okay, so here is the problem. See how there's a minus there on the outside? This is what it's referring to with that. Because there's a minus in a parentheses, we're technically going to distribute that number into there to get rid of that. Just distributive property. These numbers are already written in negative form, or they're already written in their polynomial. So if you multiply this, this becomes a positive 7, this becomes a positive 3b, and then a negative times a positive is going to become a negative. So that's all we're doing, we're just distributing that number for our subtraction. Okay, 9b to the third plus 7b to the third. 16. Then becomes 16b to the third. What happens to this one? What am I adding that b to? Nothing. So it's just going to be plus b. We're good there? Let's see if we get it right. Good? Yeah. All right, so that's my entire slide show today. That's all the notes that I have for you. What I want to do next is I'm going to go to your assignment. I want to actually get started on it together. I don't know if we'll finish it, but this is your homework for the day. So I want you to stay with me. I'd like to get through about the first five, and then I'll give you time to work on the next five. Um, everybody noticed in their, um, in their Canvas course that you're in a different Canvas course for mine now? You're in 1B instead of 1A. I've tried to go through and clean everything up. I've also added back grades to Canvas. But what I did is I'm going to mark every grade in Canvas as a no count. What that means is that the average that you see in Canvas is not your grade. So it will still allow you to submit it and it will still allow me to grade it for you. But it's not going to show an actual average at the end of the six weeks in Canvas. So it will all be in Skyward. Does that make sense? So like for instance, if Addison turns the paper in, it's going to show if she's got it missing in Canvas or if she's got credit for it in Canvas, but it will not show a separate grade with her at like a 17 in Canvas and a 92 in Skyward. Okay, so I'm just trying to do that to try to keep things clean. I've also deleted all of the excess stuff from Canvas. So what I mean by that is if you look at the modules, there's literally only one module. All you should be able to see today is the warm up, the lesson, the assignment, and the reflection. That's all you should be able to see. Is that correct? Okay, cool. Okay, so we're going to start with number one, and then we'll just kind of work our way through. Um, it says, what is the sum of 2y plus 3y squared plus 1? And we're going to add that to y minus 2x squared. How do I know that I'm adding in this problem? What gives it away? Charger? Okay. Appreciate the effort there. Tommy, how do you know? Well, I put the plus sign there, though. How do I know to put the plus sign there? Kalia, what do you think? Um, and the question says sum of. Sum. Sum is the answer to an addition problem. Appreciate the effort though. Hey, it's 2021, right? We're trying something new. All right, so 2y plus y is what? 3y. 3x squared minus 2x squared is? 1. Yeah. 3y plus x squared plus 1. Answer choice B. Easy enough? Cool. All right, number two. Which expression is equivalent? Okay, now I want you to look at number two with me. Before you try to jump ahead, I want to go over number two really quick just to make sure that we're on the same page. 